Hey, Lang students. This is Ms. Arklin. I am going to be going through Wednesday, April 1st, 2020 in the lesson that we have for today. This is going to end up being about a three-day lesson, and this is part one. So our goal today is now that you've gotten introduced to what this course is going to be all about um, and virtual learning, that we're going to dive into rhetorical analysis because it's been a minute. Uh, so we want to kind of give you a refresh and break down a prompt that you've seen before and go through the process that you should be going through every time that you approach a prompt, a rhetorical analysis prompt. So this is going to be review but really, really important review. And the goal on my end is to be breaking it down and modeling the process for you. And ultimately, the final task will be a formative um, rhetorical analysis paragraph on this prompt. So I'm going to be bouncing between my slides on space, which should be review, and then annotating the prompts which the prompt that we're gonna be working with is the 2018 prompt by um, Madeline Albright. All right, so review. The first thing you're going to do when you get a prompt is you are going to focus on this up here, okay? So you have everything you need in that prompt alone to start developing the rhetorical situation, and then you gather more from the text itself. But today we're going to focus on that portion for right now. All right. So our rhetorical situation, as a reminder, is speaker, purpose, audience, context, context and exigence. The first thing that we're going to look for is speaker. And the questions that we're asking ourselves when we're trying to figure out who our speaker is, is not only what their name is and the basic in information that we know about the person, but what their values are. And that is going to be the real influence on the choices that they're making and ultimately how they're going to try to, to um, connect with their audience. So questions that we can ask about our speaker is who wrote this? What do we know about them? What don't we know about them? Which we'll probably get from the text itself. Does this text have a particular meaning because of who wrote it and said it? And can the speaker be trusted? So let's look at our prompt. All right, our prompt is, in 1997, then United States Secretary of State Madeleine Albright gave the commencement speech to the graduating class of Mount Holyoke College, a women's college in Massachusetts. Read the following excerpt from her speech carefully, then write a well-developed essay in which you analyze the choices Albright makes to convey her message to the audience. All right. So remember that you'll be given the purpose for the prompt. So we're not going to worry about that just yet. I want to stay focused on our speaker. So we are given the information that the speaker of this piece is the United States Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, who was Secretary of State in 1997. So maybe your history isn't as great as you want it to be, but it's probably important to know who our president was in 1997. Thankfully, the text is going to give you that information later on, um, which is President Clinton. So President Clinton was a Democrat, so we can then assume that Madeleine Albright was a, de was a Democrat in her political beliefs. And then that's going to guide how she delivers this message and the beliefs that are, that are making her um, select these different choices to convince her audience of her purpose. All right. So we have a female Secretary of State in the 90s and she's a democrat that's a whole lot of information that we can already use to start crafting our rhetorical situation okay the next thing that we're going to look at is going to be purpose so the purpose is the speaker's overall point or argument a purpose is greater than a message it's what a speaker wants his or her audience to do or believe as a result of engaging with the so purpose is the message. It's the action or belief that the author wants their audience to have after listening to them. Now, in the case of this older prompt, it's not given to you, but we did come up with the purpose, which was. All right, so the purpose that we came up with for you is her to convey her message that perseverance can make a difference. So you're given the purpose. 
But now we get to think about the purpose in the context of this speaker. So she's a female, again, in the 90s as Secretary of State. She's in a position of power. We start to already ask ourselves, is she credible? Is she trustworthy? She's achieved a lot. She certainly persevered. I think this is somebody that maybe we could listen to about this message. All right, so going back to our prompt here, once we are given our purpose, then we're thinking about our audience, so who, to whom the argument is addressed. Sometimes it's going to be a really big audience, sometimes it's gonna be smaller, um, sometimes it's gonna be really, really clearly defined for you, and other times you're going to have to make some inferences. In the case of this prompt, we have that this is a commencement speech to the graduating class of Mount Holyoke College, a women's college in Massachusetts. So we have a female secretary of state talking to a group of women who are graduating from a private school in Massachusetts. She's pretty much hitting the nail on the head in terms of speaking to people who will want to listen to her. But these are fellow women who potentially need this message more than others because it's a message of perseverance. So already we have this kind of beautiful triangle, um, rhetorical triangle of speaker, who's a female secretary of state, speaking to female graduates who obviously have goals because they decided to um, take this step in the 90s to go to college. So they have some sort of goals in terms of career and um, education. And then we have the message which is that perseverance is key, okay? So here's our rhetorical triangle that we're sitting in. So that is our audience. And then the context is the immediate social space and situation in which the speaker makes the argument. So it's beyond calendar time. It's also including social, political, economic, and the physical environment. At this point, reading our prompt, the only information that we have right now is 1997. So if you have that historical um, toolbox of information, great, use that. Also then be prepared to start trying to gather information about the context from the prompt itself. Because odds are she is going to be alluding to things that are happening at that time because she's Secretary of State. She's fully immersed in the social, political, and economic um, uh, climate of the town. All right, so we're going to use that information and she's a credible source for that information. And then we have probably the most challenging one for most of our students, which is exigence. Exigence is the spark that lights the flame of the argument. Um, it is the idea that it's a sense of urgency. Why now for the speaker? What is the spark or the catalyst? So in this case, our context is graduation. It's graduation of an all-female class, a private school in Massachusetts in 1997. Thinking about what's happening in that context, immediately what comes to my mind is going to be the glass ceiling, women's rights, and what I know about Madeleine Albright, which was that she was a proponent of women supporting each other and building each other up and breaking through the glass ceiling. And so I already can start to sense that her exigence is somewhat driven by her own personal values, who her audience is and what she wants them to believe during this time in history. So this rhetorical situation has immense, immense power over the choices that she's going to make because it's always important to think about what if she were speaking to a group of men? She'd make entirely different choices. What if she were speaking to leaders or of the country versus children versus college graduates versus working class women? All of her choices would be different. So we have to pay close attention to how this rhetorical situation is developing in her text. The rhetorical situation determines the choices that she makes in order to convey her message successfully to this specific audience. So that breakdown is something you always want to connect back to. If she's repeating a word, why is she repeating that word when we think about the fact that she's a woman and she's speaking to women? If she is choosing a specific line of reasoning and starting with one point and ending with another, why is that the most effective path for her to take when speaking to college gradu graduates who are women in the 90s? 
that's what you want to start connecting all of her choices to because then you are really analyzing rhetoric and not just analyzing what a metaphor does or what a repetition does it's always why that repetition why that metaphor why that choice when this is the situation all right so that is a review of space that's kind of a deep dive the rest of the information that you are going to get once you've taken as much as you can from the prompt is to now start breaking down the text itself and seeing if you can gather any additional information about the rhetorical situation from this text. So my homework for you, our homework for you, is to now read the text. And we want you to read the text and see if you can gather any additional um, information about the rhetorical situation. In this case, I think you're gonna get a lot about the context. And you're also probably going to get more information about our speaker's values and, and um, the message that she's trying to give to these women. So your homework for tomorrow is to read this prompt and to annotate or take notes on it about the rhetorical situation. And then tomorrow, we are going to start breaking down line of reasoning. Okay? All right. I'll see you tomorrow.